Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in again. This is Fahan from Dahua Nordic. Today I want to introduce a very interesting product for you guys. It's an accessory, it's not a camera, it's not an NVR, but it can be working as a combination. It gives you the possibility to solve a lot of technical advanced solutions with uh, these alarm boxes right here. So let's try to open this guy up first of all. We have the description, the wire diagram, so you know how to wire this completely together with an NVR. And down here we have the alarm box, first of all. And here is for the wiring, how we connect it directly. And then we have the DC plug. It has two ports, that means if you have an NVR or an XVR, you can use the 12 voltage power supply to connect it and then split it. So you don't have to have a separated power supply necessarily. So let's try to have a look on the alarm box. At the front of it, it has the indicator for the power and then the ACT indicator, which uh, lights up every second to tell you that there is communication between the NVR and this one can also be used with an XVR as well. And then we have the dip switches right here, where you can set up the specific address for each alarm box because you can use multiple of them with one NVR. Then we also have the A and B, which is the RS485, where we connect it directly. We can connect it directly to the NVR, and then we can also connect directly from this one to a second alarm box and a third and a fourth. Then we have the 12 voltage power supply as well. On the back here, we have a lot of different wire possibilities. As you can see here from the diagram, everything is explained very well and detailed, so you know exactly how you need to wire this with an NVR. What is the main feature of an alarm box? Why is it interesting to use? Why can we use it together to create bigger solutions? It's because we have had lots of requests for expanding the alarm inputs and outputs on our NVRs since we only have a limit of usually 16 inputs and then 6 outputs. With this one we can extend that with 16 more inputs and 6 more outputs so that we have the double. And even going all the way when we connect up to 4 of them as a maximum, we can extend it up to all the way with the largest NVR with 80 inputs and 30 outputs. So then we don't have any limitations in terms of the extension for the inputs and outputs. This box works with the NVR 4 series and the 5 series, depending on the 4 series if it has the RS485. It's not all the models that are equipped with it. So the good thing about this is it's very well integrated with our NVRs. So you can control all these alarm inputs and outputs directly from your phone as well once you have connected to your NVR. So you can control each one of them. That could be a gate you wanted to open, that could be a door you wanted to open to make it as a complete smart home solution for yourself based together with these two devices only. So you can power up directly from this one as well. If you have a small simple lock or whatsoever, you can power it up directly. You don't need to have any additional power supply depending of course if it's a gate, a, a source that has a high requirement of power, you have to have an independent power supply. So uh, this one connects directly with RS485 to the NVR and then you can extend it from here or directly from the NVR. So let's try to have a little bit of a look on the wiring part of it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, as you can see, I'm gonna check the wiring that I write, did right over here. The first part is from the NVR, the A and B is connected to the alarm box A and B. And then from this first alarm box to the second one from A and B. So this wire right here is very short. This could have been all the way up to 1.2 kilometers. So the distance is not gonna be any issue. So the second part, as I follow the manual, is to set the address of each alarm box. And by default, they are set to zero. So right now I'm gonna set the other one to one. There we go. And now I'm gonna power it up. Okay. 
And once the connection between the NVR and the alarm boxes is established, it's going to be blinking green right over here. And as you can see already, it started, they both started blinking green over here. This could take up to three minutes. So make sure to be patient. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be connecting the devices right from the back here as a indicator lamp and also a trigger button. So I already prepared the alarm devices right here, my indicator and my button over here. And I already did the wiring over here. So right with this solution, I'm powering it up directly from the alarm box. But of course, if it would have been a gate or something that required more power than 500 milliamps, I would have to use a separated power supply. So now I connect the output on top and then the input in the bottom. This is how it's supposed to be looking in the wiring. There's going to be a more detailed picture of the wiring done in the diagram. The next part I need to do right now is I need to configure this in my NVR to make sure that all I did with the wiring, everything worked as I expected to work. So now that I wired everything, I need to make sure that this is going to be recording on my NVR based on my alarm input. So the first thing I need to do is go to my recording schedule by clicking, right clicking and then main menu and then down to storage. And as you can see by default, my NVR is recording constantly. I want to change that into only recording by alarm. So I'm gonna click all and delete all of this by holding my, my left mouse button and dragging it. And in the same way, I'm gonna choose alarm and then coloring it with the red color, which is for all the alarm. And I'm gonna apply it and then go back. Next part I wanna do is I want to enable my alarm input source and output source so I can choose whatever is supposed to happen. So I'm gonna go to my alarm settings. And as you can see, I have my local alarm. Those are the alarm inputs and outputs directly on the NVR. I can always mix them with the alarm box. Then I have the alarm box, alarm box one, two, three, four. And then I have the camera's external alarm inputs and outputs. That I'm able to control the inputs from here. So we're gonna go to the alarm box because those are the ones that we wired. And then I'm gonna choose the alarm box two. As you can see over here in the status, it shows me that this is the address, but that's the alarm box number. So both of them are active. So that tells me everything is wired correctly. Then the next part is I want to choose which alarm input. And the first one is what I wired. And then I can name it whichever I want to name it. Then it's going to be easier for me to distinguish them. Then I'm going to go to my alarm out port over here and then I can choose if it's supposed to be directly on the NVR or if it's supposed to be on the alarm box. I'm gonna choose alarm box two because this is the one I wired and make sure to enable that one. Click okay and then apply. So now when I click the button, it should be triggering the lamp directly on my alarm box that I made. There you go, that's how it's working. So the next part I can check is if it's recording. And as you heard it just before, it was beeping because my buzzer was enabled, which I can disable if I want to. And I can choose to control the anti dether time as well, which is the time which is defined for how long time I want to have a event as a maximum before it creates another event. So I'm gonna right click and then I'm going to search and then I can choose the date. And as you can see right here, I do have a little bit of recording over here in the alarm recording. I can also go back and only find the ones that are from my alarms. 
and I'm gonna click the all and then choose the alarm and remove the general. So here you go and then I can also choose to have them in a list form right here. These are all the alarms that I had triggered. I had triggered some initially before this as well. Then now the last thing I can do is I can click them and then I could save them. So if I had already had a USB connected, I could back up all of these recordings very easily. So this is how the alarm box works for the inputs. And as you could see, I could choose whichever output I wanted to trigger if it was another uh, alarm box or if it was the output directly of the NVR. So now that we configured everything through our NVR to be able to control these alarm boxes, I want to show you how you can control it using your DMSS app, which also works for for tablets as well and by the way you can also use a web browser co to control some of these relays or any DSS platform so now I'm gonna show you how to control it from the phone I'm gonna log in directly to the NVR first then I'm gonna click in the right top button and then choose the alarm outputs once I've done this the first six outputs are the ones directly on the NVR and then we have 12 more outputs, which are the alarm boxes. So now I'm just going to try to trigger the relay that we configured. And then you're gonna see a red lamp starting up here. As you can see, it's very easy and simple to control this. We are just using this red lamp as a reference. You could use any type of device that could be controlled by a IO signal. That could be a gate. That could also be a door strike or a lamp. It's just a matter of imagination how to make your, your home smarter. So this is what I wanted to show you guys. I hope it was interesting for you. So with smarter accessories, we can create smarter solutions together. So stay safe out there and see you next time.